Okay, so now that's surprising. Now this is obviously not scientific, but just looking online at pricing, Ubiquity, Unify 6 Lite, $130. Aruba 500, $600, that's crazy. If we look at an instant on, Wi-Fi 6 access point from Aruba, $158. Now this is probably the one that I'm most surprised about. A Netgear cloud managed wireless access point, Wi-Fi 6, the AX1800, $170. I'm surprised that a Cisco access point costs less. Obviously not scientific, but it's interesting that Cisco have got access points that cost the same or less than competitive access points. I'll cover a bunch of things in this video, including the unboxing, including the initial setup of the access point using the web interface. I'll also show you how to upgrade the software of the access point for free. So use the timestamps below to jump to a specific topic of interest. I am not being sponsored by Cisco to create this video, but they have sent me access points. They've sent me these access points. They've sent me other access points and other devices from the Cisco Business Solution, which is a solution for small, medium businesses. So take that as you will. I'm also a Cisco champion, but I'm not getting paid to create this video. But if you doubt what I'm saying, have a look at resources online to make comparisons. Have a look on Reddit. Have a look at other YouTubers such as Tom Lawrence, fantastic YouTuber who may give a different perspective to what I'm giving you here. I just wanna show you some of the benefits of the solution, and then I'm going to show you how to set up this access point. Now, some of the advantages of a Cisco access point versus Unify, according to Cisco, is the Cisco solution supports Wi-Fi 6, both on 2.4 as well as 5 gigahertz. It has a PoE injector included. That's a great addition, has an on-device UI. You can configure the device using a mobile app. You can use on-box web UI, which I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. Cisco also have a Cisco business dashboard, which allows you to manage multiple devices, similar to the Unify controller. They also say it has zero touch deployment. It's got a Wi-Fi 6 mesh extender. One of the massive benefits I think with Cisco is you get one year phone support if you buy their small medium business solution. They also have a three year hardware warranty, which you can extend if you like. Uh, the products are Wi-Fi 6 certified. Okay, so that was a bit of sales pitch, but let's have a look at the actual product. Okay, so let's start with the CBW150AXE. So this is the actual access point. In the box, we have the instructions, we have the actual access point, so that's what we're interested in. Nice little access point from Cisco. We told that we should visit cisco.com to get the latest version of firmware. So I'll pull this off. Now, unlike previous versions of the access point, this is closed. This used to be the console. Yeah, I've got an older 140 AC access point. AC, these didn't support Wi-Fi 6 on this access point. You'll notice they had PoE and a console. That's different to this version of the access point. We only have a PoE port. We don't have a console port. Okay, so we have the mounting brackets. And what's really nice is inside here, we have a PoE injector. I think it's really good, especially in a small business environment, that Cisco are including a PoE injector because otherwise you need to have a PoE switch and some small businesses may not have that. I'm in the UK, so I've got a UK plug here and I could simply plug this in and then get PoE on the access point. It also comes with an ethernet cable, so I could use this to plug in the access point as an example. So plug in the access point to the PoE injector, and I can get my ethernet cable connected to the PoE injector. So I've got ethernet on the one port connected to a non-PoE switch, and then I could plug this in to get power. Okay, so this cable's a bit short for my needs, so I've got a longer power cable here, which I'll plug in, and hopefully that'll power the access point. You can see it's already powering up, so we can see the LED flashing right there. Now I should probably read the instructions, so Let's have a look at the instructions that they've given us. Okay, so we told what's in the box. We get the access point, we get the mounting kit, we get ethernet cable, quick start guide, PoE injector, 
They tell us various details about the device, like the status LED, Kensington lock, etc. So once again, the console port is disabled. We've got a lock here. We can mount it using the mounting kit. Very basic setup. We're told how to connect it to a PoE device. We can also add it to an existing network. Not really much information there. What I'll do now is show you how to set this up. Now you could use a mobile phone app to configure the device. In a previous video, I showed you how to set this access point up using the app. I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna use the web UI to do it. Okay, so in the documentation, we told that we need to power on the access point, check the status of the indicator lights, It'll take eight to 10 minutes to boot. So don't fall into the same trap as I did where I was expecting this to come up very quickly initially. You need to give it time. You'll know what's going on because the LED will blink green in multiple patterns. Then it'll go through green, red, and amber before turning green again. So at the moment it's green, that means it's ready. And what that means we can do is that we can look for the Cisco Business Setup access point. So on my Mac, I can look for that access point and then join it. The password is a very secure Cisco 123 and I can click join to join the access point. So obviously that's just the initial setup of the access point. If I look at my network preferences, I can see that an IP address is allocated to me 192.168.1.137. Default gateway is 192.168.1.1. So rather than connecting to the IP address, go to ciscobusiness.cisco and click start. We need to create a new admin name and then we need to specify a password. Okay, so I need to specify a name for the access point. I'll simply call this CBW150AX1. I'm in the UK, so that's fine. I'm going to enable mesh because I want to support mesh extenders. We can specify a static IP address for the access point. For the moment, I'm not gonna do that, but you probably wanna do that in the real world. You can specify a wireless name. For this test, I'll just call it CBW150AX. In this example, I'll select WPA2 and WPA personal, and then I can specify a password. So I'll paste that in and click next and click apply to apply the changes, the access point will now reboot with those changes. That's the very simple initial configuration of the access point. Okay, you need to give the access point five to six minutes according to Cisco to allow it to reboot. And then you can connect to the new access point configured. Put in your password and click join to join the network. And then you can connect once again to ciscobusiness.cisco. Okay, so we back at the Cisco Business Wireless Access Point login page. So I'll click login. I'll put in my username, my password and click sign in. And there you go, I have logged in. I can now monitor various settings on the access point under monitoring. I could go to wireless settings and change the configuration. So as an example, let's have a look at the clients that are connected. We've got one client connected at 650 megabits per second. That's my Mac connecting to the access point. I mean, it's very, very close to the access point. I could go to wireless settings. At the moment, this is the SSID created. I could create another one. So create another wireless network. I could give it a name such as test. I'll specify the security. So put in the password. I can decide whether this is a guest network. Do I want a captive network assistant? Don't wanna use Mac filtering, I'll just set up a basic wireless network. And as you can see, test has been created. And if I search for that on my Mac, you can see that the test network has been created. Now probably one of the things you wanna do with an access point when you get it is upgrade the software. So go to management, software update. Now to download the latest version of software, we need to go to this page. Now the problem with this link is they're telling us we need to log in. So rather than using that link, if you search for Cisco CBW150AX software download and go and have a look at the access points. 
So this page, I'll also link this below and go to downloads, select the access point, which in this case is the business 150 AX access point and click downloads. It'll download the software for you directly. So you don't have to log in to download the software. So I've actually downloaded that twice. I'll just open up the first zip file and notice here's the software that we require. So back on the access point, I'm going to specify the transfer mode as HTTP and I'm going to browse to the software. Software I've just downloaded is this. I don't want to use this image. I want to use this image. It's a standalone access point. So I'm going to click open and I'm going to click update to update the image. We're told that the AP is going to initiate the image pre-download process now. If any scheduled update is configured, it'll be canceled. We're told to clear the browser cache or log out and log in again after reboot when the image is upgraded or downgraded. So I'm gonna click upload. We're given an update in progress. So the software image is uploading. APs have been triggered to pre-download the image. So scrolling down, you can see the download progress, 53% at the moment. Current version of software is 10.0.2.0. So that should be updated to 10.2.2.0 once the access point reboots. Okay, that took a while, but there we go, 100% upload. So primary AP will be reset after all access points are updated. Okay, so it takes it a while, but after the upgrade, we should be upgraded from this release 10.0.2.0 to a newer version. So I'll make sure I'm connected to the right network. So CBW 150AX, go to management, software update, you can see we're now using 10.2.2.0. So I was able to update the access point without an account on Cisco's website. I had to do a bit of messing around to get that to work. But by going to this website, Cisco Business 100 Series Access Points, I was able to download the software without a login. And then I was able to update the software of the access point. So interface is will be slightly updated. One of the things you probably wanna do, which I didn't do in my previous demonstration, is click save if you make any changes. So make sure that you save your changes on your access point. But I think that's enough for this video. I've shown you the unboxing of the access point. I've shown you basic setup of the access point and how to upgrade the software of the access point for free. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best. Thank you.